involving determining relative atomic masses. So if you're given the five isotopes of krypton, which is here, usually they'll tablet the answer for us. The percentage abundance is just, if I have a naturally occurring sample of krypton, all right, then krypton has all these different isotopes. So if I go and count, okay, how many of these krypton is krypton 80? How many of them is krypton 82? How many of them is 83? And how many of them is 84 and 85? Then this is the percentages that I'll get. I'll have like 2% of krypton 80, 12% of uh, krypton 82, 12% of krypton 83, and so on. So all these percentages that I can find for each of these isotope, then we will just call this the relative abundance. So naturally occurring, how many percent of each guy that I can find in a sample of krypton, that will be the percentage abundance. Now finding the relative atomic mass is essentially calculating the weighted average of what we have here. So what we do is we have to multiply the isotopic mass by the abundance because it is weighted according to how much of that quantity is, uh, how much of that isotope is present in the sample. So multiply by the abundance. I do this for everything, the whole thing divided by 100%. So the calculation actually is quite easy. Uh, personally, I don't really like to express it as a formula because I would think that it is more complicated. What I'll usually do is I just remember the method. The mass times the abundance. I do this for everybody. Add everything together, whole thing divided by 100%. Then I'll get an answer. In this case, I'll get this 83.7. Remember, atomic masses, relative masses, molar masses, all these two, one dp. And when I have the value, we can actually make use of the value and then we can verify my answer, making use of concepts uh, in chemistry. So you notice, huh, if we have already mentioned that the relative atomic mass, it is a weighted average of all these isotopic masses, there are two things that we can deduce from this. First thing is, since this is an average, it has to be between the mass of the smallest guy and the mass of the biggest guy. Cannot be smaller than 80 because the smallest guy is 80. Cannot be bigger than 85 because the biggest guy is 85. So if it is an average, the value has to be between 80 to 85. So I can use it to verify my answer, see whether is it reasonable or not. Because when I do calculation, maybe accidentally I will mix up the function, uh, miss a decimal place, or plus becomes a multiplication or uh, vice versa. So I can make use of this concept to verify, see whether this answer is reasonable or not. Another thing that we can use is the weighted average. Since this is the weighted average, and you notice we have 57% of isotope 84, which means that more than half of the sample is isotope 84, krypton 84. So therefore, the weighted average, the relative atomic mass, should be closest to 84. Because half of more than half of the sample is 84, your weighted average has to be closest to the isotope with the biggest abundance. Again, it makes sense, correct? Because I'm calculating the weighted average, it should lean towards the one with the biggest abundance. So 83.7 is closer to 84 than to any other isotopic masses here. Closer to 85, closer to 84 than to 85, 83, 82, and 80. So you notice, what we can actually do is making use of these two ideas. Huh? It must be between the biggest and the smallest value, and it has to be closest to the one with the biggest abundance. Making use of this idea, we can actually verify whether this answer that I'm calculating, whether is it reasonable or not reasonable. So it's not just blindly, just press calculator, you get this value. It's not just purely mathematics. There's, there's a fair bit of concept that comes in.